so excited and so like I, we were just talking just laughing so much guys uh i'm talking to the best lawyer in the world okay uh she is freaking amazing uh she does trademarks and uh she's uh how do you say it i'm so dumb i can't even remember intellectual mm -hmm. property is this how you yeah, say it? Yeah, yeah. So cool. trademark's a form of intellectual property. And I'm all about protecting brands, building brands, monetizing brands. You know, like I'm all about my clients becoming billion dollar brand bosses. Hell yeah, billion dollar. That's freaking amazing. So you also was on Forbes, Entrepreneur, Black Enterprise, and she's a lady lawyer. And she's just freaking amazing. I'm so excited to have Kendra on here. Uh, Thank you. There's, there's so many, you're so, so awesome. I don't even know where to start, but let's start from the stupidest question I can think of. So what's your favorite lawyer joke? Oh my gosh. I think once I, I, I had this one joke that was like, and this was this guy I went to get my driver's license, right? And so I'm going to get my driver's license. This is before I became a lawyer. I was in law school. And he's like, what are you doing? Why did you wait so long to come get it? I was like, oh, well, I'm in law school. He's like, oh. Well, there's a lawyer joke because, you know, people can't resist. And he's like, what's the difference between a lawyer and a prostitute? And I was like, I don't know. One of them don't mm -hmm. have student loans. And oh he was God. like, no, you know, <laughs> when a prostitute's done screwing you. Mm. But Yours is was like, funnier. <laughs> Yours is so much funnier. But I'm like, I'm looking at him I'm like, would you know, sir? You're quite old. Like, would you know? <laughs> Like, would you? Because you've fallen asleep. You didn't even know she screwed you or not. Like, would you? Would you? But, um, yeah. <laughs> that, that's the worst <laughs> Lori joke I've ever heard. Holy shit. You're fucking amazing. Um, okay. Let's talk about what you... Because you were talking to me about... Okay. Can you tell us what your son said to you? Because that was freaking hilarious. Let's just keep the hilarity train going. Oh, I feel like God. If you're so just on the podcast or... It, 10 hours you're going to be funny for that amount of time. yeah so what did your son say to you first of all he needs his own podcast like i, I would love to record <laughs> yeah. my yeah. kids they have because <laughs> yeah they are hilarious like I, I hate when people say hilarious i'm just doing that on purpose guys i know the word's hilarious um so he is four and like um he has now he's in this phase like before he goes to kindergarten he's in pre-k so i'm like great you know this is awesome he's about to go into like real school so i'm in the kitchen getting him dinner as i normally do i'm being tortured because they never eat it but i make it anyway and so i'm like oh, i am making dinner he walks up to me and he's like mommy you're a naughty pirate and i'm like that's, in my head i'm like that's how you got here sir that's how you got here and now i'm thinking to myself I'm like what are they watching at school you know like because this is like so it's, this, this to me belongs on pornhub like so then the next day it's like again if you're not looking at him and you just heard these words you're gonna start thinking like what is going on here so he's out hanging out with my nieces and my niece upset him and he's, he has this, like, stuffed tiger. He walks around with this little stuffed mm -hmm. tiger everywhere. He's, like, obsessed with mm -hmm. this tiger. So my niece upset him, and he goes to her, and he goes, you know, I'm mad at you. I'm going to spank you with my tiger. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my God, do not spank her with your tiger. Like, and then I saw my head and go, again, where does he keep getting these really go good porn lines? Like, what are they teaching this kid at school? Like, what are y'all watching? Are y'all watching Pornhub? Like, what is this? So I get, um, I get, um, I text my other half. I'm like, babe, I'm a naughty pirate. <laughs> you just me with your tiger. He's like, what are you watching? I was like, those are actual lines from uh, the four-year-old. He was like, oh my God. He has better pickup lines than me. <laughs> so, that's oh me as a mom. <laughs> oh my God. This is the best podcast ever. And I know it's going to be, and we're only like five minutes in. Please have your son come to the podcast and oh, uh, Lord. oh my god uh your your significant other better treat you right because we know uh if we if we have kids with you they're gonna be freaking hilarious at age four okay your son's <laughs> gonna be freaking yeah he's gonna be like better than r kelly in terms of picking up women and he's gonna oh be stop no me. Gets... no no stop no you you can't even mention r kelly on okay. uh, in the Sorry. same phrase as the kid Sorry. come on lee you're trying to get us in trouble no no, no. okay okay I didn't cut that, that out <laughs> Sorry. okay okay I will. Who's, a, who's a good guy who gets a lot of women a good guy that gets a lot of women that doesn't have yeah. it um 
you know my son's kind of short so i don't know maybe we could say like the rock you know like people okay, like yeah that's good you okay. know like okay, the, like like the rock no, I was is just nothing but like raises admission. eyebrows because I was listening to I'm a Flirt uh, before the podcast, so... Uh, Pause, Lee. Sorry, you can't I listen to that record. music anymore and say that you um, listen to it. What is good? What? Who is your, who is your publicist? <laughs> Let us get you one. I don't have one. I don't you have need one. one. You, you should not listen to R. Kelly. Because <laughs> I can't separate the artist. I mean, okay, I feel like separating the artist from the behavior. Anyways, okay, that's me. Yeah, yeah. No, um, don't go there. Don't go. How about okay. we say this? Lee, you are allowed to listen to whatever you want to because you're a grown woman. However, yeah. you are not allowed to publicly admit that you listen to those things because oh, you're a grown sorry. woman. Yeah, you trying to get us in trouble. Really? I, I, I don't even know who R. Kelly is, girl. He's been wiped from my memory. Moving on. Okay. So, <laughs> how? why did you decide to be a lawyer? Because I'm crazy. I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not crazy, guys. I'm crazy. Um, I'm, I'm crazy. Not. My childhood dream had always been to be a lawyer, right? I was that kid that you're like, what do you want to do? I want to be a lawyer. Let's argue. <laughs> like, yeah, I, <laughs> I, I always wanted to be a lawyer. And so, like, I actually had a struggle, actually, with it because my parents actually wanted me to do engineering because they're like, oh, my God, engineering is so much easier. Because, okay, my, let me just back it up for a second. My family is from South America. So if you are not born in America and your family's like, Caribbean or I know you guys get it too on the Asian side like yeah they sure. have a list that you follow you are a nurse yeah. a doctor yeah. lawyers are on there maybe but not that much anymore and um, right. engineering like they're like those are guaranteed work you know <laughs> like you're gonna get a career Absolutely. so the lawyers are better I feel like isn't it they're like, engineering well because then you yeah. still have to go to law school and you have to pass the bar right so but engineering like you don't have to go to law school you don't have to pass the bar you know what I mean Mm -hmm. So my parents are like, do computer engineering. You're really good with computers. You know, like you like computers, like do it. So I like signed up for engineering and girl, like we had this one project where we had to drop an egg from like the top story of the science building and your oh, egg's not supposed to crash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My egg totally cracked. I was like, that should be the sign. Mine that should have been the sign that I'm not in the right area. But I continued on, right? I continued to go uh -huh. on. And then eventually, like, I then I got into business um, as a business major. Like, they shifted. Like, mm -hmm. literally, my, mm -hmm. my counselor sat me down. She's like, yeah, honey, this is not your field. Like, you haven't really done great in any of these classes. <laughs> Man, that's harsh. That's like sounds like a Asian parent or something. That's no, 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 man. I think she did. She was doing her job. She's like, honey, like your yeah, chemistry, true. you got a D and you barely got a C the time you did it over again. She's like, you know, you you kind of need to pass algebra and all these classes, and you're not doing that great yeah. in it. Like, I never really, I was never a math person, so I'm like, oh my god, why am I studying this? This is my dream. And so I was like, look, I really want to go to law school. And mm -hmm. so I just buckled down and I, I did my undergrad actually in business management and marketing because I knew I always wanted to work with businesses as a lawyer. Mm -hmm. And then um, I went to law school and I did my MBA at the same time. So like I've wow. always been on the track of oh business and law. You're incredible. Holy shit. Can you be more amazing? I don't think it's humanly possible for anyone <laughs> to be as Holy shit, MBA. And I didn't even know that was possible. Seriously. So yeah, um, the loans, the loans are here to prove it. Go ahead. Oh my God. <laughs> it's, it's totally I always possible. tell my, my female listeners to marry rich. Okay. Like just get a guy to pay off your, your bills, you know, but you're already so kick-ass and like, <laughs> you're, that's, that, that, that's awesome. So like, how did you decide on your specialty though? Like, did it just fall into place because of the MBA? Is it that the next logical choice or like, how did you decide on it? Not at all. I was stubborn about going down this track, to be honest. Like, so when I started, I, I was business and I kind of was like, um, we call it door law. Like anyone that walks through your door, you take that client and you, and you work that case because you're like, you're starting out, you're fresh, you know, like right. you want to pay your bills or whatever. So when I graduated law school, I graduated, my daughter was about five or four months mm -hmm. so I was like look I wasn't gonna be able to work the the 70 or 80 hours of insane time that you have to do when you first come in you know it's an associate attorney so I was like I'm gonna start my own practice you know and so I was taking any and everything I took divorces I took any and everything that came through my mm -hmm. door I took business you know but I focused a lot on marketing myself on business but if my clients called me up and they're like hey I need to divorce my wife I'm like I can help you with that 
Um, so <laughs> after doing that for a while, I, I about a year, this guy reached out to me. He's like, hey, I'm going to redesign your whole website, focus on trademark. I was like, excuse me? Uh-uh-uh. Like, you know, like, don't tell me to turn down money. <laughs> Yeah, I wish I found his information. I could write and be like, "Sir, you were right. I was wrong. Thank you." <laughs> and uh, and then slowly but surely, like I started heading down that path. I started um, getting into uh, working a lot more with just focusing on the business, protecting. I had a lot of clients that were running into trademark infringement, and I was having clients that were getting their applications rejected. And wow. I just kept going down this rabbit hole, and it just and it worked. It totally worked for me because one, um, trademark court, I didn't have to appear. Like if like I have a hearing. I can appear in my pajamas. Like it didn't matter. Like it was over the telephone. It was great. Mm -hmm. And so I just slowly kept going down that path. And I, as I kept going and progressing, um, you know, I guess manifesting what I wanted, you know, like I wanted to just grow and learn more and, and just be involved. And I know a lot of people think like, oh, just because you go down one path, that means it's totally boring. You're never going to, you know, have enough clients or not enough work. That's, that's the opposite. It's mm -hmm. like, now I'm looking like, okay, we need to hire another lawyer. We need to get this in place because it's just growing. It's just like intellectual property is where it's at because mm -hmm. a lot of times people are creating so much so fast Yes, mm -hmm. in today's society that they need to protect it. Mm hmm yeah it's a so that's kind of how yeah it just like it just naturally happened uh, and and some of it manifestation and some of it is like just going with what was what was really happening with my clients and what what I really enjoyed doing. I love that. So, uh, so, because my question: Did you have an amazing time in law school? Now I have to add MBA, which is even more amazing. I mean, how did you even <laughs> manage to do that? Like, how is that humanly possible? Please explain. First of all, law school is no joke um, because they like imagine someone picking you up in the USA mm -hmm. and like dropping mm -hmm. you off in another country where you don't speak the language you don't understand the system you're like trying to figure everything out so you walk around for about three years like the world is coming <laughs> to an end and so that's legit you and every semester you're trying to learn a new language and then you know I was I was not the perfect law student because I also have my MBA program so they had it set up where we did majority of our MBA classes during the summer. And then we'll do a couple of them throughout the school year, but majority of them we did during the summer. And then like on the weekends, we would go and do some classes. The MBA building was like the business school was like right across from the law school. So it worked out perfectly. Yeah. Um, but legitimately I walked around like the world was coming to an end. The first semester I think I gained like 50 pounds like it was crazy and then eventually you just get to a point like okay the world is coming to an end I could only do so much so when people see me and they're like oh my god you're so calm and then inside I'm like you don't understand like I have a running list consistently of Mm -hmm. things that need to be done like yes. I feel so bad for my other half because like he'll be like babe you know like what's going on I'm just like oh you know just I have things to do Mm -hmm. And he's thinking like, oh, okay, no biggie. And I'm like, like this is a $10,000 case or it's mm -hmm. $100,000 on the line or, you know, like he has no clue because he's just like, she's so calm about everything. And I'm like, because mm -hmm. I spent three years being tortured to be calm. <laughs> and then the last thing you want is your lawyer to be freaking out. You know, like you right. call your lawyer, you're like, ah! And your lawyer's like, ah! <laughs> you know, people are like screaming. Like, like, That's not yeah, what happens no. at uh, the law firm. What? Totally not. <laughs> it's it's totally not like that. And and again, a lot a lot of my practice my practice is virtual, so it's not like uh, there's there's quite a few. I could probably count on my finger how many clients I've actually had to meet in person. Um, mm -hmm. So I love that it's virtual. Like I get, you know, we can FaceTime, we can talk or whatever, but a lot of times it's paper, electronic email, phone calls. It's great. So I, I really don't have to do that. But because of that, it also forces me to find different ways to interact with my clients mm -hmm. so that they still get the traditional feel, you know, because mm -hmm. it is virtual. I love that. So, wow. Can you tell us more about your field? Like, what what is trademarks? What is intellectual property? Can you just explain that in, like, a nutshell for us? 
Well, intellectual property deals with your creation of your mind, if that's the best way to put Ooh. it. So when you think about trademarks, this is all about branding, which is very creative. Like the slogan, the look, like Coca-Cola, like they branded the name Coca-Cola. They branded the way Coca-Cola is written. They've mm -hmm. even trademarked the bottle, like the Coca-Cola mm -hmm. bottle shape. Like you can protect all of that because what you're doing is protecting the brand that you built. So you don't want someone else to like mm -hmm. create a, a non Coca-Cola product, but put it in Coca-Cola bottles. And then you're right, buying right. it and you're like, I thought I was drinking Coca-Cola and mm -hmm. it turns out you're drinking like God knows what, you know, like right. who knows? So it's more of like, Hey, you're protecting your brand. You don't want any confusion. You want people to know when they buy Coca-Cola, that's what they're getting. And mm -hmm. I'm using Coca-Cola as an example I don't even remember the last time I drank Coca-Cola, which is funny to me, but, <laughs> but that's but such a good example. Yeah. You broke it down so clearly. So thank you for, thank you for that. Wow. That's yeah. The other good. one is copyright. So when people mm -hmm. always mix up the two copyright and trademark, so copyright <laughs> deals with the content you create. So this right now, like the podcast, the recording, that's what you can protect on the copyright, mm -hmm. um, your photos, your videos, um, anything that's like created content. So branding, think of it as like, what's the packaging outside? And then inside is, is, is the copyright, the content that you create. I love that. So thank you. And, for and don't even get me started on that. That's just a whole nother world <laughs> of like, because sometimes I've seen patents and I'm like, how is this a patent? Like, I know people think sometimes like patents have to be super complicated, but and I can because of confidentiality release like one of these patents that you see every time you go to the airport. You just don't know it. And um, I just thought this was the craziest patent, but it was. And they won a lawsuit on it. So don't want to get into it too much, but let's just say patents don't have to be that complicated. Let me just put it that way. I'm just scared of it now because <laughs> I didn't really know what I was. No, but now I'm like, all right. So, okay, let's switch gears a little bit. So how, how can I meet a fat, old, rich, and generous lawyer, if that's even possible? Girl, I'm trying to find one for myself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's, I it's, think it's, we, it's okay. It's, it's good. Okay. But, but, okay. <laughs> First, I think there's, there's a high probability that you can meet a lawyer. Let's just be honest. There are yeah, several yeah. of them. There's, like, there's quite a few people who went to law school. There, there's lawyers. If you're in Florida, there's like a lawyer in every, every street corner. Like there's lawyers. So that's not hard to do. Now, I don't necessarily know if he has to be fat. Let's be honest here. Cause that, that, that I'm not specifically, you know, he doesn't have to be fat. He doesn't have to be skinny. Mm -hmm. He just needs to be happy if that's mm -hmm. possible. Mm -hmm. So I can't guarantee you that I know where you could find a lawyer. I don't know if necessarily he'll be fat and I don't know about well being his, his bank account, but I will tell you, if you're looking for someone that generally will have a nice um, revenue stream, Believe mm -hmm. it or not, the injury attorneys really what? do really, really well. Oh. Really, really well. Mm -hmm. Why is they that? Do. Because the lawsuits are just always coming or why? Lawsuits are always coming. Two, people don't have to pay them a retainer. So they can basically take, you You know, like you can be walking at the grocery store and you slip on water and that's, you know, they'll take that case. So they settle, they work a lot of cases, their caseloads. They have a lot of cases going on at one time, and mm -hmm. so they tend to they tend to make a lot more money because people aren't paying them for it. Holy shit! I'm gonna run with this information. That's amazing, guys. Uh, this is gold. Uh, maybe after this podcast, they're all gonna get married like very quickly. <laughs> all the, all uh, and Injury lawyers, um, and then I would say after that would be like criminal defense. But we're not talking about like around the block ten dollar bag drug dealers we're talking about these where the retainers are like five hundred thousand like, oh, dollars <laughs> that those, those are those are the big ballers in, in that area okay i'm gonna go to the billboards that say injury lawyers and just take down all their information <laughs> before dating. just so call them you know i have an injury it's right here all right <laughs> yeah <laughs> This is insider information, guys. <laughs> or you might be saying, I can injure you. <laughs> oh, I like that. I, <laughs> I used so to bad. make my ex-husband cry regularly. Does that count? Emotional trauma? Does that work? Oh, my God. So how about Lee? I never knew you were married. How about that? Because I was so 
this fucking dude that ghosted me for a green card, but that's another podcast. So, uh, uh, were you on 90 Day Fiance? I didn't even, and I didn't even get money for it. How fucked up is that, Kendra? Isn't that crazy? Like, at least oh I should get some God. money for it. Just don't My mom loves that. that show. My mom loves 90 Day Fiance. I like, anytime I come over and see her, like, she's always yeah. watching it. Like, Watch she's that. probably watching it right now. Like, if I call her, like, that's what she's watching. She oh loves God. that show. And it's insane to me. I'm like, wait, what? Why is this even on TV? Like, it's bananas. It's, it's messy, and we love mess, right? That's That's how we are. So... I don't think she's uh, their target audience, though. My mom's like, she has a doctorate. I'm like, how is this? Like, <laughs> why? But there's two channels my mom watches, CNN mm -hmm. and 90 Day Fiance. <laughs> I love that. Well, that's easy then. Your information intake is consistent, and you can very easily strike up a conversation with her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I need to watch it again. I, I heard, I've seen a couple episodes, but they're, yeah, it's nuts. I love it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So... What's a day in the life like for you? Do you have a typical day at all or just every day is different? Um, well, right now it's, it's, it's based on my three month old. So I have, I have three little people. I have a seven year old who's going on 17. Like she's like wow. a mini teenager. I call her a mini ager. <laughs> and um, I have the four year old who's the boss. And then we have the three month old boy um, who just joined the crew who's like totally taking over everything. So my schedule is kind of based around his right now, but generally speaking, it's usually like, um, I do check in with my virtual assistant. Mm -hmm. uh, we go over what needs to be done. What's what she's done. What, ha what she hasn't done. Uh, then I do like try to do callbacks. Like if I have to call clients or whatever, I get those calls out of the way. I do consultations in the afternoon mm -hmm. and then I try to do some, get some marketing stuff done. Like I'll check in on different things that we're working on and make sure like the marketing is all good with that. And mm -hmm. then after that, it's usually time for me to get the peeps. So I get the little peeps. Mm -hmm. We do dinner, which they never eat. I don't know why I'm legally obligated to feed people that don't want to <laughs> eat, but um, <laughs> do you just, I, Korean parents, they just like, they, they don't even like let their kids eat when they're hungry. It's like the forced time. So they like really discipline the kids to do that. But I don't know. Oh, even, really? Where's yeah. the Korean babysitter? I need that in my, in yeah, my kids' life. Because they don't it. do that. It's more like, oh my God, you're giving me spaghetti. I hate spaghetti. You <laughs> eat spaghetti all the time. What is this? Or if I give you pain, <laughs> they want, they like breakfast for dinner. Like if you give them breakfast for dinner, they're good, you know? Like, but anything outside of that, they're like, oh, oh my God. The sauce is touching the the shrimp. It's like yes, yes it is. <laughs> like tonight, it was my son's. Like oh, I love kiwi. Okay, I give him kiwi. He's like oh, there are seeds. Yes, those seeds were there last. Time. I don't want to eat the seeds. Okay, eat around the seeds. Like this is so weird. Like why am I being tortured for feeding you? Like you're torturing me. Um, yeah. So feed them dinner. Go through that books, reading, writing, like I go through that whole gamut. Then after I get them to bed, which is the best time, um, then I hop on and I do go through client emails. So what I love is that I can schedule emails because before I used to send out my emails at midnight and then people used to really write me back and I'm like, no, I don't want to talk to you <laughs> at midnight. Like I want, this is why I'm doing it at midnight so that we're not having that conversation. So now I can schedule my emails. So at 8 a.m. my emails go out all the time. 8 a.m. Nice. in the morning, like all these emails go out. So I go through that. I do a couple more trademark applications. Nice. I do searches. I check on stuff I see if I have to send out any cease and desist letters like I go through all of that and when I'm done like now like my schedule I'm usually done with everything by 1 a.m um a good night it's 1 a.m um on a crazy night it'll probably be like 3 a.m and then I'm up again to start everything at 7 a.m wow have you thought about getting your own show I think you'd be hilarious you uh, yeah people tell me all the time but it's yeah. it's and I, I have yet to find where to fit that in because trust me, I think people would totally be entertained to see like me navigate with the kids Absolutely. with my other half and like, yeah, yeah, totally. I get it. Like the other night. Okay. This is, we were, we went to see this movie, right? We were going to the movie. So we're like, okay, it's Sunday night. Let's go sneak in a late movie. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I'll be cute. Like, I'll make brownies and then I'll sneak it in, you know, like, because 
<laughs> with sneaking brownies into the movie theater. I'm a bad, I'm a naughty pirate, remember? So, <laughs> so, Is that your I new show? Like, That's going to be our new show. Naughty pirate, <laughs> pirate. lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> so I put, I wrap the brownies all up and I put them, it, it looks, you know how brownies can look like a brick <laughs> almost because they're yeah. like square. So I stick it into my jacket pocket and we're walking in the movie theater and the, the brownies fall out of my pocket, Lee. Like they totally fall <laughs> They fall on, and they fall on the floor and he looks at them I look at them and we both like start laughing we're like oh my god you are horrible at sneaking in things I'm like yeah I don't do this for a reason so I pick it up I stick it back in my jacket I'm like okay cool so I'm walking walking we get to the counter to get popcorn or whatnot and Lee it falls out my pocket again <laughs> in, oh my front of, in front of all the employees <laughs> and I just like pick it up like you didn't see this I didn't see this don't look at me no one makes eye contact like that's <laughs> he's like that's what you get I was trying to be cute I was trying to be like you know yeah make you like... brownies baby you know and it totally went left like normally we go to this movie theater where it's like you said you get blankets and like yeah. they come and they but I was like oh it's a quick movie like we could just go to the theater like down the street but yeah I learned my lesson I, I think if people like watch me, they'll be like, oh my gosh, she is so hilarious. Because most of the time when people meet me, they're like, oh my gosh, she's so smart. She's this, like she's managing these million dollar brands and, you yeah. know, and things like that. And, and then they are a bit intimidated. Like, I think a lot of times once people they get to know me or they, they meet me and they really talk to me and they're like, oh my gosh, like she's funny or she's chill or she's this, mm -hmm. they have a different perspective on on me as a lawyer but i want to always introduce myself as me as kendra mm -hmm. like being a lawyer is one of those things just like being a mom is one of those things you know what i mean it's not mm -hmm. the only thing like that's not only me mm -hmm. yeah because you're yeah. so you're like a gemstone seriously you're like a diamond like so many facets but it's all shiny everywhere so i love that so Aww, thank you if you <laughs> okay i miss it i'm just gonna pay you to walk me around all day <laughs> Just, just, yeah. When I get I into an argument with my other half, I'm gonna be like, "What did Lee say?" She said, "I'm a diamond. <laughs> I shine on all ends." <laughs> seriously you need to be a celebrity i mean you work for celebrities uh can you talk a little bit about yeah let's talk about that like what are the celebrities? if you're at liberty to say if not i understand but you work with some big name celebrities for sure yeah i i'm not gonna say some of the okay, names okay, but oh, yeah. um i do i do enjoy being behind the scenes on the brands and what i've I love and I still remember my first time like seeing like one of the brands. I, okay, so I could talk about Creole Essence because they're like one of my one. We're close, not just for work, but like we, we're close as in we'll, you know, friends. Mm -hmm. um, we built a friendship over the years. So their brand recently was featured by Jada Pickett Smith on yeah. her her Instagram, like she got a gift box from them and they had their products and they're, they're all about, um, casserole from Haiti which is important because a lot of times you hear uh, about Haiti it's not usually in a positive light you know and so they're repositioning themselves the company you know the the country even like they're and basically they're an ambassador is like they're bringing such positive um so it's a positive image for their country and so they sent this gift box to her and she featured it and like I felt like it was my baby you know I was like oh my god like <laughs> I love moments like that and then yeah. I have moments like um so Miss Universe just happened right yeah yeah so my client had a trademark and the trademark office was cool with it we we got <laughs> through that part but mm -hmm. Miss Universe they hit me up and they're like hey what? we're uh we don't like what your client wants to register we need to we need to talk and yeah. so I was That's just like never good we need to talk that's death for anything yeah well we no, we don't need to it. talk never we're never gonna talk <laughs> yeah, no we were able to negotiate it sorry sorry yeah no no we we were able to negotiate something and we made sure that both parties were happy so watching mm -hmm. this universe has changed for me you know now it's like and when i post or read or see it now i i, I now have a connection beyond just watching it as a spectator like now i've i've had communications i've had to deal with with them as a brand and so mm -hmm. i think things like that change my perspective on things but i also it makes me learn a little bit more and it also 
it also makes me love what I do more because I was able to get my client what she wants without, you know, having her end up with a multi-million dollar lawsuit because that's what it would cost if you really want to get into a fight with Miss Universe. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah. Thank you so much. That's, I feel like I'm, I'm not supposed to even know about this, but I feel amazing because it's like, yeah, I have insider information on so many different parts and yeah. And everyone else knows now too. This is so great because your job is so awesome. And you're just so, so awesome in general. Thank so, you. I feel that way sometimes when I'm in meetings or like, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, when some of my friends, like some of the new people I call my friends or, you know, I'm really close, but I'm like, oh my gosh, like they're sitting or they're handling something for this this thing that's in the news, like, it's funny because my mom will sometimes be watching the news and it was something I was just speaking to my friend about that they're mm-hmm. handling or a client that I'm about to get or whatever the case may be. And like, it's on the news. So it's like always nice to, to have that moment. And then I feel like, you know, I didn't become an engineer, but my parents are still proud. Like they still, they're like, Oh, my daughter's, yeah, my daughter's handling that. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's working with that brand like I'll see um, my some of my clients brands on billboards like Taria Pitt I did uh the trademark for her school of champions and mm-hmm. like every time I see an ad I'm like I'm like I, I did that <laughs> awesome. I still I still get a little cheesy and I think that also keeps me grounded and humble that I still appreciate uh that and I still have that feel about everyone that I work with, whether it is someone like Taria Pitt or someone that's a new startup. Like I get excited about all of them because to mm-hmm. me, the goal is for them to create billion dollar brands. I love that. So, wow. I'm so excited for this. This is not even, you know, funny millionaires. It's going to be funny billionaires. Awesome. So, for real. <laughs> Seriously, yeah, I'm so amazed. Thank you. So, this is like the best podcast ever. I'm so glad. Like you, every other guest listening, you guys suck. Anyways, okay. So what- guys, you just needed some coffee and some meditation. That's all. <laughs> Re, what was it like? Uh, cleanse your chakras and. <laughs> and I'm just smudge. a dark person in general. I don't know if it's possible to be cleansed, but. Anyways. Oh my god! Like, yes, it is. I'm just too lazy right now. I, I don't know. Maybe maybe next year. I don't know. Maybe you know what? I listen to self-hypnosis. Sometimes it works. Mm. Okay. Have you ever tried it? Uh, I looked at it, but I guess I didn't really dive deep into it too much. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take a look at it later. I think maybe... We can talk about it after after the podcast. Yeah, let's talk about it after. No, the only reason I'm saying so is because honestly, I didn't think they worked, and I I would I would always fall asleep. <laughs> so, they, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, so is it working? Because I'm falling asleep. That is funny. <laughs> or is it just that I'm tired? So what I did was I set my sister up with the headset and put it on her so she can hear, and she fell asleep too. So I was like, okay, it's not me. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I just thought That's- I was just tired. These self hypnosis things don't work. It just puts me to sleep. <laughs> That's, <hilarious. laughs> That's what it's That's a funny about. one. I like this one. That's funny. So, um, like about your job, like what's your favorite part and what's your least favorite? My favorite part? Oh my god, it it's gotta be my clients. Like each mm. client is unique, like each brand is unique, like and as I grow and I do more, like I add more to each each one. And I'm always surprised at who my client is. And it's just funny to me. Like I'm always surprised who my client's going to be. I'm also always surprised at the connection that my client already has, like someone in my life. Like this this lawyer that I am, I'm really cool with, like we were working on something together and I had to go take this client call. And so I, I stored the client's number, you know, in my phone and I stored right. their, their name right. and she's a, she's a YouTuber. I love her to that. She's awesome. And, um, she called me and I went to pick it up and then I took the call and I came back and then the lawyer was like, is that, is that, is that who I think it is? I was like, yeah. How do you know her? She's like, I watch her channel all the time. I love her. Wow. I'm like, I didn't even expect, you know, like, I don't know. I don't even know how you know this person, but I'm always cool. surprised at the impact that my clients' brands have. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm always surprised at who in my life they're connected to. So it's always like, not just that I'm working on their stuff, but it's like, I'm working on something I know 
someone in my life is going to see like and I want I want them to see my work and be proud of it so that's my favorite part is usually you know my clients the worst part Mm -hmm. is hmm, the worst part when I have to when I have to uh, send out cease and desist letters Mm -hmm. when I have to say hey you stop that stop that stop that right now (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> mm-hmm. I have to send those letters and say, Hey, you're infringing on my client's work. Please stop it. But I have mm-hmm. to do it. Like when you have a trademark, you have to protect it because if you don't, you can end up losing your trademark. So mm-hmm. people tend to think like, Oh my gosh, they're being overzealous or whatever the case may be, but you have to, or you can lose it. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times, you know, it'll be someone up and coming that could have been my potential client, but I, I, I have to protect the brand of my clients. So I have to send and I'll cease and desist letters all the time. And so that's not always fun. And, you know, sometimes, but I'll be honest with you, sometimes when they, they don't cause a fight with me and they're like, yeah, okay, I'll back out. You know, I understand. And, you know, we don't, we don't have to go toe to toe. It's great. But I hate when it turns into an unnecessary fight and they've now spent like $10,000 fighting with me instead of just taking that $10,000, taking that L and investing in rebranding. Mm, that's yeah. true. So, wow, just so much good stuff. So, okay, what? let's switch gears a little bit. What is funny to you and who's your favorite comedian? Mm, that's a good one. What is funny to me? I don't know, man. I have like a dry sense of humor. Like my aunt in England was like, you have British humor. <laughs> British humor is the best though. I feel like British humor is more subtle. It's not like, can I say, uh, American humor is a little bit more slapstick. Yeah. Like she considers me like, she's like, you have such, she goes, you're so cheeky. You have a dry sense of humor like your uncle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> mm-hmm. He's like, you have British humor. Um, what's humorous to me? Usually it's my kids. Like, oh my gosh, like those little people are funny Yeah, to me. Like just yeah. listening to them all day long, they like crack me up. Like, Seriously, that's, 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 yeah. That's they're awesome. funny so i i never they know are, what yeah. they're going to say like if i introduce them to someone like mm-hmm. okay um like i i just never know what's going to come out of their mouth like today my son's like oh yeah yeah i want to move and like he wants to move and he wants to move everyone like all the way down to their dog their cat like, like, like move like physically yeah. like he's yeah he's like let's move them in like let's let's move everybody oh. in the same house like my <laughs> aunt my aunt my uncles my cousins their oh, dogs their cats i'm like you're nuts like <laughs> he's like Noah. he's Noah he's building the ark he's just gonna get everyone <laughs> yeah I'm like you need to chill we ain't doing that like <laughs> you need to chill on that or my daughter Rab, where sometimes I'll play around with her and I might use like slang that we see on Instagram I'm like okay sis she's like I'm not your yeah. sis <laughs> <laughs> she's like I'm not Make your sure the eye roll I'm just picturing the eyeball right now. <laughs> yeah. Your daughter's so funny. Yeah, oh, she's like, yeah. what? I'm laughing. So, yeah, they're I'm totally funny to me. Oh, my God. Yeah. Huh. So, um, what was the other part of the question? I'm so I sorry. I don't even know. It doesn't matter. Like, it's just so I find funny. myself to I'm be laughing humorous. way more than, oh, my God. This is, a, this is the best podcast ever. Sorry, you guys. All you guests suck. Uh, Kendra's the best. Anyways, um, so <laughs> I, find, <laughs> what was- I find um, I think I'm funny. You know, like I was. Just you are hilarious. I was like, baby, I'm funny. He's like, you're humorous. I'm like, what's the difference between humorous and funny? Like, I, I legitimately was like, look, I got three degrees and three hundred and sixty nine thousand dollars in student loans, and I don't know what you mean by what's the difference between funny and humorous. Like, what? <laughs> like. All this oh, education, yeah. and they didn't teach me the difference between funny and humorous. So I was it like, what? Is that? the same, right? Whatever. Who cares? Who cares? Exactly. I agree. Yeah, we exactly. use. I always say, like, whenever he does something like that, I'm like, baby, you know, English is my second language. It <laughs> is? What's your first language? <laughs> it's English. <laughs> oh, okay. That's... It's a joke. <laughs> but that's hilarious, right? People completely see you differently, because I was like, yeah, English is my second They're like, what the fuck? It's so good. I'm like, well, yeah, I mean, what do you expect? me to be like not good <laughs> after flying across the pacific ocean to lead a fucking mediocre life like what the fuck is wrong with you <laughs> you know actually um guyana was owned by the british so 
they uh, have their own dialect. It's like Patois. Like if you hear my mom, you'll hear her accent. So she speaks um, Patois, a uh, Guyanese Patois, ooh. which is like a broken English. And, and so that's our dialect um, for Guyana. But our official mm-hmm. language is English. In fact, we're the only English speaking country in South America. Wow. So yeah, because you have, right next to us is Brazil and everyone else is like Spanish and then right. Dutch in Suriname, they speak Dutch. And then in French Guyana, they speak French. And we're the only ones that speak English. How lucky of, of me to be born in the only country that speaks English. Hell yeah. The most yeah. money-making language. Hell exactly. Yeah. So um, if you could rule the world, what would you do? Mm. I would make everything free. God, I'm so tired yeah, well, of working. Is that socialism? Wait, wait a minute. I don't know if it is, but I'm just saying, like, <laughs> like I, you know, my, my daughter goes, where does money come from? I'm like, we print it. So why don't we just print some more? I'm like, I don't know. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, there is an answer that I learned in e-com somewhere in school. But I'm just saying to myself, like, that that, that totally makes sense. Why don't we just print some more? What, or... <laughs> <laughs> That's, okay. Imagine you might how much genius. more time yeah, people you would might have. run a South American country. Actually, yeah, I think you should just run a South American country. It'd be perfect. Yeah. I just think of you know what I as I've gotten a little bit older and a little bit more into my profession and also obviously because I'm a mom. I mm-hmm. think about my time, you know, like yes, yes. Mm-hmm. how much time I spend working. I love what I do. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I yeah. love it. Yeah, I just feel yeah. like you know sometimes I question like what am I working for and I always try to make sure like in perspective like I'm working for my children like I'm mm-hmm. and I tell them all the time I'm like you do like I'm working to pay for whatever it is you want like my daughter mm-hmm. obviously knows because I go what do you want for Christmas she's like I want an American girl doll I'm like Jesus mm-hmm. you are not cheap are you <laughs> like no she's, I like, am she's, high, like, high maintenance uh, I mean she high lost a tooth yeah, she lost a tooth. I was like, okay, how much do you want from the tooth fairy? A hundred dollars. It's one tooth, kid. Got like, <laughs> got like ten more to come out. What are we you doing? You know what here? she's gonna do though? Cause she's smart. Cause okay, she know she has high self esteem just already from what I'm hearing for one tooth. She's gonna find like a billionaire dude. So I feel like you should you should feel okay with your daughter. She sounds super smart. Like, well, thank you, Lee. I will let her know. She's probably listening right now. Um, yeah, yeah. She has like, a mom's like, brain. Of course, she's gonna be a genius. A you know, hundred dollars like, per tooth. We we settled on genius. five, and she then I later a, found out it's a dollar. Business. She should go into a luxury business and then <laughs> sell like antiques and art stuff and like things that look like teeth. Then she can charge like a billion. You know. Don't get her started. She would yeah. probably create fake teeth. But um, yeah, so, so... That's expensive too, though. You know, a fake tooth is probably more than 100, right? In America. Um, to get a tooth implant, it's about... It's more than getting new boobs, actually. Oh, what? Fuck? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'd rather just yeah. get boobs then. It's more visible, and it's going to help me get a man faster. Uh, I was thinking that, you know, you could always do that. You can always get the new boobs and then just get the new man to pay for the new teeth. Because this is my thinking, right? It's like a chicken and egg problem. Do you get the boyfriend first before the plastic surgery or do you get the plastic surgery first and then get the boyfriend? Oh, oh, whoa. I don't know. That's a good one. I know. It depends, you know, like. It depends on what kind of work you need. Yeah, that's true. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure a, a beauty like you, you need neither one. Okay, Lee, you, uh, you don't need any one of them. Okay. Well, but but if, if I had to pick, I would probably get, I would probably get new boobs. Okay. Yeah, that, that yeah. makes sense. I would too. Yeah. So, all right, next on the Christmas list, we new boobs. All right, let's do this. Only guys can afford food for me. Um, so, okay, so. <laughs> can I write your Tinder profile, your dating profile? Dude, like, hey, I got you gotta be able to Tinder. afford new boobs. Dude, I ban- I was banned from Tinder. You know that? Why? I was because like I got all the guys to invited them all to one place, and they reported me because I was gonna do like an Asian style bachelorette, and like they reported me because I all invited them to one location. So now my Tinder, Tinder uh, profile is banned. So shut the front door. You're kidding. I'm serious. I'm, you. serious. I'm serious. I'm serious. You're like, going to an Asian bachelor. <laughs> oh, that, that's like that's kidding, right? But I was banned from Tinder for real. I'm banned from a lot of things. Banned from many. Uh, <laughs> oh my! No, this is where my friend. She's on Tinder, and she's like, 
you know, whatever. And she goes to the grocery store and she runs into one of her Tinder guys and she's there with her daughter. And so she's trying to ignore him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he comes up to her and he introduces oh. himself. Oh my God. So this is why you Tinder when you're, when you're not home. You don't use it at home. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, that's insane! Uh, it, it was funny. I'm glad I, I'm glad I'm banned now. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't want to go back anymore. So, um, all right. So, how can we make lawyers happy if that is possible? Pay your bills on time. <laughs> that's that's a good one. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, pay oh, your bills. Then. Then that's so yeah, good. I mean, because you, okay, you think about it like. You want to get paid for your work. Like, if I'm going to spend time and work on something for you, it means I'm taking away time from somebody else's case, somebody else's trademark, somebody else's something. You're using up time, you know? And that, that's, that's the biggest thing for me is time. Because if I'm not working, I could be hanging out with one of these little people, um, one mm -hmm. of my peeps, you know? So you just think about that. Like, you're using my time. You have to pay for that time. I can't get that time back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah. So, okay. Um, I don't want this interview to end, but we're going to do a part two for sure. So um, if you allow me, but um, where can we find you, stalk you and work with you? Okay. So for work, it's trademark registration dot lawyer. And if you want to check me on Instagram, which I need to update now, as you mentioned it, Lee, it's um, Kendra Steven. It's at Kendra Steven. K-E-N-D-R-A. Mm -hmm. uh-huh s-t-e-p-h-e-n wow the best interview ever in the universe so thank you so much for your time i was so entertained by your energy and wit and just how smart and how beautiful you are like if i was a lesbian i would be like uh yeah we'd be i like personally <laughs> like i don't even know if you'd like me but who knows but thank you so Girl, much. Girl, you know, I don't discriminate. You know, I'm, I'm yeah. all into the multicultural. It's all you black and yellow, right? Black and yellow, <laughs> black and yellow, right? Yeah. I can't yellow. with Julie. <laughs> I, it was great. Thank you so much you for too. having me. I can't wait thank to come you. back again. You Absolutely. have a good one. You too.